Hello everyone and welcome to this lesson that is product design. First, design is a process of satisfying, satisfying customer's requirements through shopping or configuring product service and processes. Or to design is to conceive the locus arrangement and working of something before it is created. For example, before you are doing your research, before you are doing your thesis, you have to prepare research proposal or research design. Just like that, organizations have to design a product before creating the main product. As you remember, among the 4P strategy in marketing, place, promotion, price, and product, product strategies, one, that is critical to achieve the competitive advantage, the competitive advantage of the organizations. Organization must continuously, by the way, continuously monitor its market and the environment for possible introductions of the new product so as to retain its market share. We have to check, we have to assess the demands of the customers or the way how the competitors are doing. We have to check the environment and the markets. As we remember from the definitions of operation management, operation management is a process or the activity of designing, directing, developing, and delivering goods and services to the customers. So one of the tasks of operation manager is to design the product. One of the main tasks of the operation manager is to design a product. So as to introduce, so as to introduce new product into the market, into the market. Product design or designing a product is very crucial for the organization because 70% of the cost of manufactured product is determined at its design stage. It is, it is huge amount of cost which is determined at the design stage. So it is very crucial. And we can also differentiate ourselves, our organization's product based on its quality and cost. We can compute by differentiating our product in terms of quality and cost from the competitors. And the other is always there is design, development of the new product and introducing into the market. We have to give new products persistently for the customers. Why? Because products born, live and die. Just like human beings, the products can also born, live and die. That means there is limited life cycle, limited lifespan. Product life cycles is limited. So we need to have we need to continuously do the design, do design of the products. Product life cycle, this figure indicates the product life cycle and its phases. There are four phases of the product life cycle. The first one is introduction, growth, maturity, and decline. In these four stages, the cost of development and production is initially high and the sales revenue is initially low and there is negative cash flow here. Here there is negative cash flow and after that the cash flow starts to grow and at decline stage at, the, at this point the cash flow starts to, to decline the net revenue starts to decline. That means the profit. So here, there should be an introduction or there should be a new product which can replace the old product, the old product. So 
there is always product design. And the other point is the rate of maturity stage depends on technology, level of competition, rate of obsolescence, culture, test of preference. In general, products have limited lifetime. They born, live, and die, but their rate of maturity stage can be affected by technology, level of competition, rate of obsolescence, culture, test of consumers. This can affect the rate, the speed of maturity. By the way, some product may have limited life cycle. For example, a newspaper may have a life of a few hours. Seasonal fashion, for example, clothes, seasonal clothes may have months. Some cassette may have years, years of lifetime. Some phones may have some Samsung mobile or iPhone mobile may have a year, a year of lifetime. And a vehicle may have a year or two years lifetime. And after that, they, can, they should be replaced by a new product, a new versions. Otherwise, it will be out of the market, out of the market. In general, operation managers design a system that helps to introduce new products, new products successfully. Otherwise, the firm may lose the market. The firm may, wrote, may lose the market. Product design have to fulfill the following. The first one is, is it should satisfy the customers. At least it is better. It, it, can, it should create better satisfaction than the previous product. It should achieve aesthetically pleasing the design, pleasing designs, and the design should be manufactured easily and quickly. We can use standardization and simplification to achieve easy manufacturing and quick manufacturing in order to deliver to the market ahead of the competitors. Standardization means we have to use mass production, the same components with mass production, and those components are replaceable. They can be used interchangeably. And the other is simplification. We have to remove it out or reduce the unnecessary parts, the unnecessary parts which cannot add value to the final products. And the design should perform the design should perform better than the previous one and, if possible, with lower cost, with lower cost. And we have to produce under our capabilities. That means product design should consider factors such as our resources like capital, supply, skill requirements, and equipment. If it is beyond our scope or our resource, that is ambitious, that is over ambitious. Here is a product design process. The first one is idea generation. Idea can be obtained from different sources. For example, suppliers, our suppliers may provide some ideas for our new product design. Our marketing department, because our marketing department can, can have contact with, can have frequent contact with customers, so they may know the problems or the suggestions of the customers so they can get ideas, research and development. Their main task is to give solution for the problems or, and they can create new ideas. So we can use that as a source of ideas. And even the competitors through the techniques of reverse engineering, reverse engineering, we can get idea from the competitor's product. Even we can contact the customers directly. We can get their feedbacks or we can get from their complaint. We can get from their complaint on our service or goods. So here we can get a lot of ideas, several ideas here, and not all the concepts or the ideas can further develop into service or products. We can filter it out. We can filter it out through different criteria. 
through feasibility study we can conduct feasibility study so as to select the ideas we have to screen it out and after that we have to prepare preliminary design after preliminary design we have to evaluate and improvement we have to evaluate and after that we incorporate improvements and we finally prepare prototype for pilot tests the prototype may have a model of clay to a computer simulation then after successfully accomplishing the test we can produce a new product or we launch our service new service this is some more detail about what we discussed in the previous speaker the concept screening the purpose of concept screening is to evaluate the concepts different concepts that is generated by uh, generated from different sources by assessing the worth or the value of the design options against the number of parameters or design criteria feasibility can we do it based on our organizational capacity resource skill finance can we do it some ideas may be over ambitious so we can ignore that and acceptability of the design options with our customers can our customers accept our design options that should be also considered does the option satisfy the performance criteria the performance criteria is the main thing that means the main objectives of the product that is intended to achieve that should be also considered will our customers want the product the new product based on that design so that is also the main task does the option give satisfactory financial return we have to also consider the profit if we cannot get the profit that is useless and by being pessimistic that means thinking the negative side if something go wrong in our product in our new product can we tolerate the risk that should be also considered if we can't tolerate the risk that's a problem and the next is design evaluation and improvement after we have after we prepare preliminary design we have to e evaluate that design and we need to incorporate the improvements it is to take the preliminary design and see if it can be improved before the service or the product is tested in the market before the actual production we have to improve it there are two techniques by the way the first one is quality function deployment here we try to ensure the eventual designs of the service or the product that meets the needs of the customers the final product or the design have to meet the needs of the customers the needs of the customers this is the main the first techniques and the second one is value engineering here we have to reduce the cost or we have to remove it out unnecessary cost before producing the costs the unnecessary parts that should be reduced should be the parts that can add any value on the product if the parts cannot add any value to the final product so we have to reduce that part so ultimately we can reduce the cost we can reduce the cost so through these two techniques we can improve we can improve the product and then we have to produce prototyping it's necessary to test it is necessary to test the products before the main production product prototype include everything from clay models sometimes we can use clay models or computer simulation or some representative models mathematical models so we can use that in order to test after that if we successfully accomplish that test so we can produce the products or services we can launch the final product or service and the other 
point is the product design techniques. There are a lot of product design techniques, but here we only see the three techniques. The first one is robust design. Actually, the products can do their action or can do their uh, uh, can do their activity on normal conditions. We consider normal condition for the products. For example, a mobile can do its work in normal conditions, maybe in normal room temperature or in a range of temperatures, but may not work in water. A mobile cannot work in water. And some mobile which has waterproof features can work. So that design is called robust design. The design, the product or service that can function over a broad range of conditions. That means in abnormal conditions, in abnormal conditions. A phone with waterproof, cup, uh, waterproof features can work in waters. And the second is modular design a form of standardization in which component parts are grouped to form modules, to form modules, which can easily be replaced. The modules can easily be replaced with equivalent modules. For example, the power box of your PC has different components which form power box module. And if, if the power box fails, so we can replace with equivalent power box for your PC. And the motherboard of the computer is also another example of modular design. We can replace if the motherboard of the computer fails. There are different components in the motherboard of the PC which can form the motherboard that is modular, that is a module. And the last one is computer aid design. Computer aid design is we are using computer in order to do a design. We, we can use computer uh, graphics, for example, graphic softwares, for example, AutoCAD, ArchiCAD, and so on, in order to design buildings, in order to design bridges, and, and so on. So we can use computer graphics or computer softwares in order to make a design. In order to make a design. Here is the last section, by the way. In this section, we discuss about product design and the other section is process selection or process design. By the way, product design can go along with process design. For a new product design, for a new product design, there should be a process design which is compatible, which can create that product. So, there is interaction. That means product or service design has an impact on the process design and vice versa. They affect one with the other. Here, there is designing of the product or service. Products and service should be designed in such a way that they can be created effectively. And here, process should be designed so they can create all the products and services here, which the operation is likely to introduce. So they can, they cannot go separately. They can go together. We cannot isolate product design from process design. We will discuss about process design in the next lesson. So till then, have a good time. Bye.